I'm here with 60 Scoop survivor Tannis Ryan, who is originally from Sucker Creek First Nation in Alberta. Welcome, Tannis. Thanks, Crystal. Grateful to be here. Yeah, now you are a vibrant and shining light in your community and for your people, but it didn't start that way. We're going to go back, 60 Scoop, one of the most devastating time periods in our history, dark time period in our history, where Indigenous children, thousands of them, were taken from their home and put into foster care, non-Indigenous. You were one of them. What was your experience like? Well, my experience was loss of identity, abandonment, right from the get-go. Um, and then the, the city I was raised in, Calgary, there was a lot of racism there. So there was a struggle, always a struggle to find my place in the sun. Where do I belong? Who am I? Um, you ended were, up in a youth detention center? Yeah, I ended up in a youth, deten youth detention center and it was in this center. Um, they had given me a chore to do and it was laundry and I happened to bleach everybody's laundry and obviously everybody's really mad at me and, and I did never get that job again so that was <laughs> the bonus of that. But I saw that the bleach colored the clothes white. And so I always knew growing up that it was my skin color. So I used to hate being brown. Mm. And I thought that was the reason why I would, couldn't fit in. I wasn't accepted, I couldn't be loved. So when I went home on a TA that weekend, I bathed in bleach because I thought then I would be loved and I would be accepted. Um, today, I'm really glad to say that, that, you know what, it just gave me a really bad rash and I'm so grateful that it didn't work because I'm really, I'm really proud and feel beautiful to be brown today. Mm -hmm. Come on, and one yeah. of the lies that was told to Indigenous, you know, even in residential school, was that when God made you brown, he made you a mistake. Mm -hmm. But we know today that isn't true. No. And that's what we're doing here at 100 Huntley Street. We're bringing those stories of truth and reconciliation to the forefront so that there could be a greater healing um, in our nation. And I believe that if we get those root systems right, then everything else will flow. Absolutely. Tanis, now we are going to be headed to uh, your, your homeland, yeah. um, Alberta, next week. We're going to go with our small production team to actually encompass your full story. So you were on the streets, legs were threatened to be amputated, then yeah. all of a sudden you encountered Jesus powerful we can't tell people the Super full <laughs> we can't tell people the full story but just tell us really quickly how much you love Jesus oh I copiously absolutely undoubtedly love Jesus he um you know he's like my fire firefly in the dark right he's encompassing and he unconditionally loves me and he unconditionally loves you you know uh I'm the daughter of a freaking king and I'm blessed and, and grateful to be, have a chance to be restored and renewed and, and transform and, and have salvation, right? Mm, God on. rekindles burnt out lives with fresh hope, um, restoring dignity and respect into their lives, a place in the sun, and he's given me my place in the sun. Yeah, come on. Now, if you at home, if you're watching this and you want to participate in bringing healing and hope to so many Indigenous across the nation, I encourage you to call the pledge lines there and or, or donate online at crossroads.ca slash donate, or you can call 1-800-265-3100. Thank you so much, Tanis, for being here. Thank you, Crystal.